Who won the fight, Mr. Wade? We won the fight. Okay. You saw it. I just won it two rounds away. You only saw two? Yeah, I can tell you right now. I, 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 thought, I, thought, I thought we won the fight. I, okay. I mean, we definitely threw more punches. Okay. It was, and we uh, landed more. Yeah. yeah. But, but the, that's different, boxing. Yeah, different angles of the judges. I would say the judges' position they have right now is not the, is not the good position. I'd like to see the judges a little bit higher. I did a study, and you can see better angles. Just like you do at home. You watch the fights at home. The judges, uh, the fans at home can see a better fight than the actual judges at ringside. Because you got better angles. You can see all the punches are actually being landed. I see fighters losing fights when actually I thought they should have won, but the judges saw it different. So, so, it's, so it's not that it, that is uh, the judges are, 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 are corrupt or like they say they corrupt. Uh, they're inept or they don't. They're blind. It's none of the above. It's that the position that they have. Move them up a little bit higher. You'll see how much better scoring you're going to get in boxing. I proved it with my study. Uh, Ring Magazine gave me four pages uh, a couple of years back, and I'd like to see that happen in the very near future. I remember that. Okay. That's a great idea. Or at least monitors. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, you got Mauricio Suleiman oh, told me he loved the idea. He said, Joe, we're going to start doing it in Mexico with four rounders and six rounders. Yeah. So hopefully that will come to, to reality in the very near future. Okay. Yes, if TC. You, if you had to be critical of mm -hmm. uh, any part of Sean's performance in that fight as a trainer, is there anything that you could break down that you think that maybe Sean could have done a little bit better? That's a question I can't answer for you because I didn't watch it. So if you ask me to critique anything about any fighter, I would want to go back and do my homework first. Okay. And uh, But I always err on the side of Era. I always go that way, you know, if I'm not sure. So during that actual match, when I felt he didn't do well in the round, he came back to the corner and I told him that. Dude, you didn't win that round. We need this round. He gave me the next round. Um, there wasn't a lot of times during that fight that I had to say that to him. Um, I had to put something out there and I, I proposed a scenario to one of the actual television commentators who spoke to me the next day after the fight. <clears throat> but I'm gonna let you continue before I, before I go into that, go ahead. No, I mean. <laughs> no, because, and the reason for that is, I'd be doing him an injustice, I'd do myself an injustice as a person that um, takes pride in actually you know, putting in the work to make sure I know what I'm talking about before I speak. So, um, no. And, and I guess I was, I was, it was more of a question, you being in the corner that night, at that point in time, you know, and you kind of answered that. Yeah, yeah, the because, so so because back during, the, the, during the fight, in the heat of the moment of the fight, when I felt he wasn't doing well, yeah. and I said something to him in regards to that, and I told him that we needed more, or he needed, needed to do a certain thing. Um, for example, when I told him to change up and start using his jab more, um, at the end of the fight, we wind, we wind up landing 58 jabs to 23 for Keith. That's double the amount of jabs. I'm gonna take a good guess and say it looked like, to me, every round we, we won the fight on the inside. Now, if CompuBox says we won the fight double on the outside, then I gotta question how they were perceiving the fight. That's being, um, politically correct because Mr. Cortez is standing here. So um, that, 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 that in itself, the numbers speak for themselves. We land double the, the amount of jabs. Um, when I asked him to do that, he was able to do that and he was able to be successful with that. So, um, you know, uh, that particular thing that you're asking me, I couldn't answer it that way, but I can answer it in the moment That's of what was going on. Yeah. He was giving me what I asked for and he was being successful with it. And do you feel like right behind you, Kenny? Was there anything that Keith Thurman brought into the ring that you didn't expect? Did he do anything that you guys really didn't expect to happen in there? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say not in in the truest sense that we didn't expect. Was I somewhat surprised that he fought as hard as he did? Yes, because. I thought he would actually run more than he did run. Um, but he fought more than I expected him to. 
but there was, you know, points where he did some things that uh, we expected him to do, and uh, you know, it was just, it was just uh, in the heat of the moment of everything that was going on when he reacted to what we what we were doing. There was no chance or no time at that point to really be surprised because we were right back at it. So, not surprised, but I was, at, at the least I would say, I was, you know, I have to give him props, like in that particular situation, that he came right back, or he fought back in that situation, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey Kenny, uh, did you notice by, um, Keith Thurman showed, uh, at times it looked like he wanted to quit. His temperament looked like he uh, mentally was just giving up when, in some exchanges or at the end of some rounds. It looked like Keith was just kind of done. Did you notice that in the fight? No, I did not notice that. And I, didn't, and I haven't watched the fight, so what you're saying to me is new to me. Mm -hmm. Not only what you're saying to me is new, I haven't had this discussion with anybody about the fight. I didn't discuss it with right. him, nor did I discuss it with him. When I asked them today who they thought won the fight, that was my first time having a discussion with them about it. So the question that you're asking me, no, I did not know that. Um, Sean didn't, he didn't relay that to me in the corner. Uh, he was totally focused on what he had going on. That might have been helpful, but no, I didn't get that. I mean, there's times where I felt like uh, he showed the temperament of a, of a real fighter, a true yeah. warrior. There was times he just looked mentally defeated. And maybe you can look back and see what well, I'm talking about. Well, when I go back and look at it, I'll be looking for that. Um, and, and that's another thing that makes me look at the judging of a fight. Because if I, if, if, if I speak to a judge and I ask them what they want, they're going to say we want effective aggressiveness. They're going to say um, we want ring generalship. They're going to say, I'm sorry, they're going to say they want defense and clean blows. Okay, so I'm going to take a guess and step outside myself, not looking at the fight the way I saw the fight, but maybe the way they saw the fight. Apparently, they didn't see what you saw. Apparently, it's my opinion, but it's right. what I thought. Apparently, they didn't see those points where he was succumbing to the pressure and he was succumbing to the effective aggressiveness and he was succumbing to the clean punches that were affecting his performance. So, um, no, I didn't, but I'll be looking for that. Do you think in a tight fight, should it be mandatory press conferences for judges? Say that again, please. There's a tight you fight. You hiding behind your camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't want a, me to see who you was. Yeah. Who in let you in fight. here? Which one? In a tight Ooh, which one I'm gonna let you in here? <laughs> oh, okay. Let me just check. In a, tight, I guess I can. in a tight fight, do you think that judges should have mandatory press conferences? <laughs> judges should have mandatory press conferences. I think judges should have. I, I think, you know what? In that particular situation, I'm gonna take myself out of it where I'm at and put myself in their situation. I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be forced to be in a press conference after a fight to answer questions that I may not be able to answer and the emotion of the fight and, and people seeing it however they saw it might contribute to some of the things that are said in a negative way and now that carries over into comments that were um, misconstrued and when you're moving forward to the next fight, you got all of these things that you may have said that they taught. Well, last time that judge said this or that after the fight, and now you're being contradicted. You know what I'm saying? I think they should be protected from something like that. I, I wouldn't you agree? I, I don't think they should be out there like yeah. that. I agree with you. I, yeah. I, I, as an official, I can tell you that uh, uh, having the judges in a, in a position like that will put them in a very, very, Precarious position. Yeah, position because I judges sometimes they uh they they sometimes they question them. So again, because I mentioned before about the position that they're at, the way they the the, the standing position, they they may miss a lot of 
shots that, are, that we catch on television. That's why when you watch uh, the Sean Porter, Keith Thurman fight on TV, a lot of fans saw, a lot, and you heard the fans at, at the arena, at the Barclays Center, everybody booed that decision. I mean, it was, but because the fans, even the fans at home, everybody thought that, that Porter won the fight because the angle that you were watching the fight on television, that was the actual, the, the best angle to watch it. You saw, the fans really saw who landed the more punches, who landed the cleaner punches. Where at ringside, as a judge, you, you miss some of those punches. I mean, it's not your, the fault of a judge. Until they raise that position of the judges, you're going to continue to have these controversial decisions and a lot of split decisions. You don't never see the judges call it all the same uh, in a lot of fights. Ken, how did, yes. how did you feel about Sean's body work that night? Do you think that was his most significant moments in the fight, or did he keep to the body, and that the, the judges didn't give him enough credit for body punches? You said that. Obviously, it's, it's got to be apparent that he didn't get credit for the body work. But even more so, now we fought Keith Thurman, Adrian Bronner, uh, what is this other uh, kid's name? Uh, no, no. Um, Bonet? Devon Alexander. Oh, yeah. Paulie Malinaji. And out jabbed all of those guys. Everyone's been out jabbed. So you're going to totally discount the fact that the kid lands 58 jabs to 23. And what I was going to say to you earlier, TC, is what I said to um, Mr. Porter. Young Mr. Porter, that is. Uh, what I was what I was going to say to you earlier was, and and I I I welcome all of you to look at a scenario that I gave to one of the t television commentators who watched the fight. What I said to him was, when he said to me, "Oh, Ken, it was a great fight." This is the next day in, in the hotel. Ken, it's a great fight. Sean Porter. It was a great fight, and uh, it could have went either way, and uh, it was a great fight, and. You know, and it could have went either way. And I said, okay. And I didn't say any more than that because it wasn't something that I was really interested in discussing. And so he asked me, he said, what do you think? So I gave him a scenario. When I gave him this scenario, and this is one of the actual television commentators who commentated on the fight. When I gave him this scenario, he looked at me and said, I'm confused. I don't understand. I said, there's no confusion here. I'm going to give it to you one more time. When I gave it to him the second time and explained it to him, he looked at me, he tipped his head, he said, hmm, okay, so I'm going to propose the same thing to the, to the boxers, uh, uh, writers here that are here today. Switch corners for a second. Put me in Keith, Keith Thurman's corner. Put Dan uh, Birmingham in Sean Porter's corner. I send Keith Thurman out on a search and destroy mission. Keith Thurman is in control of Sean Porter all night on the ropes. Keith Thurman lands 58 jabs to 23 jabs. Keith Thurman even has Sean Porter hurt on the ropes, and at some point, Sean Porter turns his back and literally runs away from Keith Thurman. Who wins the fight? Keith Thurman wins it, right? But Keith Thurman wins the fight big. It's not a close decision. It's not gonna be a close decision. I don't see that as a close decision if Keith was doing that to us. If Keith landed 58 jabs at 23, if Keith was in control of Sean on the inside and had him on the ropes banging him to the body, if Keith physically was controlling the ring all night long, I don't think that after the fight was over, he would, his decision would have been booed. I think Keith would have won a unanimous decision. It would have been a score maybe 118 to 110. So from that standpoint, I think some people had, and I'm not, I'm not pointing no elbows or anything like that, but I think they had a, a mindset of who, who they wanted to win the fight. That's just my opinion, but, um, you know, I don't have a problem with the fight. The check didn't change. The fight was over, they handed us the same check. Kid came out of the fight unscathed, unhurt. He's ready to go again. So, um... If you guys don't have any more questions for me, one. go right ahead. Well, where does that uphill, when you're in Sean's position, where does that uphill battle come from on the cards? Is it because he's the undefeated fighter? Why do you feel like you gotta do more than the opponent to win the fight? Because it doesn't just Is you mean to do more than the champion? Yeah, yeah. 
I, I don't know. I, I, I think we did, like I said, uh, when Copy Box shows you that you land 58 jabs at 23, that's double. Okay? So that's more than double. 23 would have uh, 46. So, that, yeah. So uh, when, you're, when you're winning the fight from the outside cleanly, but you're not getting credit for it, when you're winning the fight on the inside and you're not getting credit for it, um, the only other thing that, uh, and, and, and maybe you, you know, um, I mean, you just go back to the drawing board and you work harder. We, we're not discouraged. Um, you know, we come out of the fight unscathed, no injuries, no hurt. You know, after the fight was over, um, he had to take numerous um, urine tests, uh, uh, drug tests. And so after a 12 round fight, he couldn't give them what they wanted. And so they're not gonna sit with him all night while he drinks until four o'clock in the morning to get rehydrated. So they said, okay, let's leave this job to someone else. He wasn't hurt, there was no injuries. He just needed to go somewhere and get all that fluid back in him so that they could get their test done. And that happened to be a place that stays open all night, the hospital. Yes, go ahead. It's in my view. Yes, your view. Yeah. If they had to get fight to you, so on. Yeah. Nobody would have been angry. No. No. I mean, it could have. It could have went, went that way, but it didn't go that way, and we, we're not going to, you know, we're not, um, we didn't show any displeasure or anything, you know, we didn't, you know, go crazy, there was nothing, you know, we didn't demand anything, but we want a rematch, we would love to have a rematch, uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, I think, I think it deserves a rematch.